amazing how short term the memory is of uh, a lot of people who cover politics in the press. There's an article in Politico today. It comes as there's there's uh, a number of polls that show DeSantis and Trump's tied for Republican support. One, though, has uh, Trump up like 45 percent. DeSantis at 28 percent. Fox News has highlighted that one. There's the uh, WPA intelligence poll that has DeSantis at 45 and Trump below that. They're bouncing all around. The early states are really what matters in, in the grassroots stuff. But. Uh, David Siders and Meredith McGraw have this story in Politico. The question, just how big is the always Trump component of the Republican Party? Despite his difficulties since he left office, about a third of Republicans and Republican-leaning voters still consider themselves supporters more of Trump than the Republican Party, according to an NBC News poll. Many of them aren't going anywhere. Fully 28% of Republican primary voters are so devoted to the former president that they said they'd support him even if he ran as an independent. Indeed, the always Trump component of the party is so pronounced that it's affecting how Trump's opponents operate around him. All these folks are just hoping that Trump's going to have a heart attack on a golf course one day. And that's going to solve the problem, says Fergus Cullen, a former New Hampshire Republican Party chair. It's hard to fault them. Republican campaigns have calculated that they can't afford to offend an entire swath of the GOP electorate still sympathetic to Trump. Instead, they've chosen to chip away at them through non-aggressive means. A person close to Trump said the ex-president and his campaign do not take uh, their core base of supporters for granted. He ran on a platform of the forgotten man and woman in America. They've been with him since he announced they're going to be with him. They won't leave him. Trump, for his part, is actively weaponizing his hold on the party. While Rona McDaniel, chair of the RNC, said Sunday participants in the first primary had to sign a pledge to support the eventual nominee, Trump balked at the idea, saying it depend on the nominee. Even if Trump did sign the pledge, Republicans know there'd be no holding him to it. There's one reason few Republicans are going after Trump directly, even if Mike Pence, Trump's former vice president, insists we'll have a better choice. What they're so afraid of is him being out of the tent, shooting in, said Sarah Longwell, the Republican political strategist and bulwark publisher who became a vocal supporter of Biden's in 2020. The threat is all the more puzzling why people aren't taking him on early trying to chip away at the always Trump. It may be impossible. How much Trump will benefit from an expected large primary field has been a source of intensifying debate. You know what? I think this gets it a little wrong. And and, and, uh, these are fine reporters, but I think they get it somewhat wrong. Uh, They miss an important detail. And in missing that important detail, I I think it uh, largely largely prevents us from getting a clear view of what's going to happen moving forward. The number, by the way, the number is 21. You see, the polling shows that about 28 to 30 percent, 28 to 30 percent of the base of the GOP is is always and forever Donald Trump and whatever Donald Trump says. I think the number you actually have to look at is 21.8, and the strategy you have to look at is 73.7. You're like, Erickson, what the hell are you talking about? Well, 21.8. Really, we should probably go with with, uh, 25.2. That's the number, that's the percentage of the vote that went to the anti Brian Kemp faction. 25, 25.2. 
David Perdue got 21.8%. Candace Taylor, 3.4%. And actually, if we want to, if we want to do it precisely, David Perdue got 21.8%. Candace Taylor got 3.4%. Catherine Davis got eight tenths of a percent. Somebody named Tom Williams got uh, three tenths of a percent. So that's twenty six point three percent. Twenty six point three percent. Brian Kemp won with seventy three point seven percent of the vote. Brian Kemp won with seventy three point seven percent of the vote. Interestingly enough, interestingly enough, if you look at this, if if you look at the the twenty six point three percent, that's very close. That that's even closer. Then what I originally went with, if 28% of the Republican base nationwide is always and forever Donald Trump and no one else, and you got 26.3% in Georgia, which is pretty overall indicative of the nation. Georgia as a microcosm of the nation is pretty relevant in the urban rural, the black, white, the suburban, uh, the, the, the moderate Republicans, the centrist Republicans, the mainstream Republicans, the establishment Republicans, the Trump Republicans. They're all kind of represented there. And I don't think it's a coincidence you get 26.3% which is very close to the nationwide poll after poll after poll shows there's 28% that will always and forever go for Donald Trump. I don't think it's a coincidence that when you add up all of the non-Trump vote, progressively more fringe and hardcore towards Donald Trump, it comes very close in Georgia to being that 28%. It was 26.3%. But Brian Kemp still got 73.7% of the vote. And what did he do? This is the thing that stands out to me. All There's so much in the media narrative. So much in the media narrative about, well, they don't want to attack Trump. They don't want to alienate his voters. They, they're afraid Donald Trump will fire at him. No, 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 no. They're using the Brian Kemp strategy. Brian Kemp, the governor of Georgia, is the guy who figured out how to navigate this. And when you look at what's happening, Ron DeSantis is using Brian Kemp's strategy. It's not that he's fighting back against Donald Trump. It's that he doesn't have to. What Brian Kemp did in Georgia when Donald Trump attacked him repeatedly is would just say, well, I'm not focused on that. I'm focused on all these good things. Or look, I, I think President Trump did this right, but praised him when he needed to. And otherwise says, I'm not really, I'm not really focused on this. I'm focused on that and, and talked about what he wanted to talk about. He was respectful of the former president did not throw a punch at the former president. And he still lost 26.3% of the hardcore always Trumpers in the primary, but consolidated everyone else and still won the general election against Stacey Abrams. And a lot of those people did not stay home. A lot of those people, they didn't vote protest Libertarian Party or anything like that. They went and they voted for Brian Kemp against Stacey Abrams. The dynamics will not be exactly the same, but here's the thing a lot of people forget. If Donald Trump gets a single vote in a Republican primary as a candidate on the ballot, not as a write-in, but as a declared candidate, if Donald Trump shows up on the primary ballot for the GOP at all in 2024, more than a third of the states would preclude him more than half the states, actually, it's like 33 or 34 percent or 33 or 34 states would preclude him from running as a third party under sore loser laws. You see, in a lot of states, they have this thing called a sore loser law that if you try for the Republican primary or the Democratic primary and lose, you can't then run as a third party. All these people say, well, Donald Trump, he could run as a third party candidate. Not if he started in the GOP. If Donald Trump appears on the ballot as a Republican candidate and doesn't get a vote, the sore loser laws are triggered. If he doesn't get the nomination, sore loser laws are triggered. He can't then run as a third party in November. What the Republican candidates are trying to do is not trigger his voters into absolute anger against them. Brian Kemp was the textbook there. 
you have all these people um, who you need to understand, like Sarah Longwell and the Bulwark folks, they want a fight. They want DeSantis and Trump to beat the hell out of each other to help Joe Biden. They want Joe Biden reelected. And so they're out there. I saw the Lincoln Project guys. Oh, Ron DeSantis, he's not really going to run. He's not going to CPAC. He's scared of Donald Trump. He's not going to run. They're trying to egg him on. They're trying to pick a fight. They're not going to succeed. It's a very juvenile thing they're doing. They're, they're, I mean, they're wish casting, please fight, please fight, please punch back. And you know what's going to happen. The, the national media is going to amplify this when Donald Trump attacks Ron DeSantis. You say, I listen to this Donald Trump attack and DeSantis has said nothing in response. DeSantis isn't saying anything in response right now. He's being the governor of Florida. And it's going to work. It worked for Brian Kemp. 26.3% of the vote went against Brian Kemp in the Republican primary in 2022. David Perdue only got 218 of it. Candace Taylor, who was just a, a extreme fringe of the GOP, got 3.4%. She's the diehards. She's the, the we will vote third party. We will never vote for Brian Kemp. Uh, was, there was one person who voted, wrote it in Ron DeSantis in the general election, refused to vote for Brian Kemp. And now that woman is attacking Ron DeSantis is not sufficiently MAGA because she's a nutter herself. And it didn't matter. And I don't think it's going to matter then. And I just, I want you to remember what's happening here. I want you to think about this when you hear the media say, we just don't understand why he's not attacking back on Donald Trump. Because the theory in 2016 was you had to punch back. You had to punch back. You had to punch back. And now we know you don't. Donald Trump is now a known commodity. He has been president of the United States. And there are a lot of Republicans who loved him, voted for him twice, and are ready to move on. And all you have to do as a Republican candidate is is not get in the gutter with Donald Trump. Just say, I'm not focused on his attack. He can say whatever he wants to say. I'm focused on winning. I'm focused on the economy. I'm focused on crime. Donald Trump is focused on me, but I'm focused on the American people. Some of his base you're never going to get. Frankly, I think some of those people need to go away. I, I, they, they've been traumatized in American politics and they're angry and in their anger, they are, they're, they're acting emotionally they're, They've bought into a cult of personality and when Trump fades away, they probably will go away. And I actually think it's a good thing for them and their soul. They need to, 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 they need to decompress for everyone else though. Don't, don't forget this. I think it's, it's, it's deeply relevant here that what you're seeing on the campaign trail from Ron DeSantis, from Mike Pence, from Nikki Haley already, uh, from other candidates out there, it's not that they're avoiding Donald Trump. It's not that they are ignoring Donald Trump. It's that there is a strategy, a very successful strategy of how to deal with Donald Trump's attacks. And that strategy comes from Brian Kemp, who deployed it very successfully in Georgia in 2022 against a well-funded Trump-backed primary challenge. And his strategy was to praise the president where it was proper and otherwise say, I'm not paying attention to his attacks. I'm paying attention to the needs of the voters. And the Trump voters appreciated that he wasn't piling on Trump. And many of them showed up at the polls in the general election and helped him beat Stacey Abrams. It doesn't sound to me like Ron DeSantis is trying to avoid a fight with Donald Trump. It sounds to me like he's fighting the way Brian Kemp fought and what worked for Kemp will probably work for DeSantis. And all the reporters either forgot it or they don't care to learn it because they are really savoring a fight that's probably not going to come. And by that fight not coming is probably going to help the GOP. A lot of these people have a vested interest in wanting the fight because they think it helps Joe Biden. And watch them hysterically cry when the fight they want doesn't come the way they want it. And the Republicans get elected in 2024.